What is up everyone? I am Joseph and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to ask and hopefully help you to decide whether or not you should get 99 Slayer. Before we get into this video, I do want to say that I have received a lot of suggestions for different skills that you'd like to see this type of video on, and I am reading those and taking those into consideration, so if you do have any other suggestions, be sure to let me know. But let's get into the Slayer video. For the sake of organization, I'm going to separate this video into three sections, how the skill works, how to train it, and my opinions on the advantages and disadvantages of training the skill. The timestamps are on screen if you want to skip around, but without any further distractions, let's get into how the Slayer skill works. Slayer is a task-based combat skill. It's fairly unique in how it isn't so much its own self-contained skill, but is more of a catalyst for combat. All this really means is that it gives you a varied way to train combat. The way it works is very simple. You receive a task from a Slayer Master to kill a specific number of a specific monster, and you receive Slayer experience on top of your regular combat experience. Leveling up Slayer not only allows you to train your combat skills in a varied way, but also unlocks new creatures to kill, and has the opportunity for damage increases while on task, and it also grants you access to a reward system that will help you refine and personalize your Slayer experience. The first and most basic thing we need to discuss and go over is how much Slayer experience is gained per kill. And very simply, in general, you'll get about one experience point for every hit point your opponent has, rewarded at the end of the kill. There are a few exceptions to this rule, such as certain bosses like the KBD or Caliphite Queen, or even normal Slayer monsters like the Karast, that have a little differentiation between the hit point levels and the actual Slayer experience gained. But a very good baseline to keep in mind is that monster hit points equals Slayer experience. Another quick introductory topic to discuss is the idea of Slayer Masters. Slayer Masters are the NPCs that you can go to to get assigned a Slayer task, and the master you can use depends generally on your combat level. Using better Slayer Masters or higher level Slayer Masters not only allows you to be assigned monsters that are more equal to your skill level, but it also allows you to kill monsters with better drops, and these tasks will also yield, in general, more Slayer points. And that brings us on to our next topic of Slayer Points. Slayer Points are the reward system for Slayer. Every time you complete a task with any but the lowest Slayer Master, which is Tyrael, you will receive points with bonuses on your 10th task, 50, 100, 250th, and 1000th task. You do have to complete 5 tasks in a row before you can start gaining points and starting this task streak. One thing to keep in mind during the early levels of Slayer is that if you use Tyrael to force cancel a task streak, you will reset your task streak, and you will need to repeat this process of doing five tasks in order to start getting points again. For example, if you have a task you really just could not complete, you can go to Tyrael mid-task, and as long as the task you have isn't one that he already assigns, he will give you a newer, easier one to complete, so it does cancel your current task, but it also does reset that streak that you have had. The amount of points you receive depends on the Slayer Master you use. These points are used to purchase upgrades, such as the Slayer Helm, extensions to certain tasks, which allows you to get more of a certain monster assigned to you, and the ability to cancel or block certain tasks. And that brings us on to our next topic of task waiting. So now that we have all of the introduction information out of the way, we can focus on some of the more intricate parts of Slayer. The task waiting system is a numbering system that signifies how often a certain Slayer Master will assign certain monsters. In the description, I will put a link to the different awaits for the different masters, uh, but for the sake of time, we're going to focus just on Duradel for now. So these task weights uh, were released by Mod Kirin in May of 2017 and can be used to find pretty much the probability that a certain task will be assigned. The formula for determining this is very simple. Just divide the weight by the total number of points across all tasks. So if we use Duradel as an example, he has, as of March 17th, 2017, a total of 261 weight points. And this can be found by adding up all the individual task weights. 
And if we're going to find the probability of, say, abyssal demons, assuming you have the level to unlock them, all you have to do is divide that specific weight, which is 12 by 261, which gives you a 4.6% chance of being assigned that task. So the higher the weight, the more chance you have of getting that assignment. Now, this number has changed since March. For example, Fossil Island Wyverns have been added into the game, which do have their own weight, which would increase that number. So this isn't currently up to date or extremely accurate, but the method of finding that probability is the same and is consistent. So this might seem like a lot of math that doesn't matter. However, these task weights are incredibly important for building a block list. A block list for Slayer is really just a list of Slayer assignments that a Slayer master is not able to assign. You have to pay a one-time fee of 100 Slayer points to block an assignment, but once it's blocked, it's blocked until you want to unblock it. It's a manual process. You can only block a certain amount of tasks. This number depends on your quest points. So every 50 quest points, you get a new uh, block that you can use with your first block opening up at 50 quest points with one additional one unlocking upon the completion of the Elite Lumbridge and Draenor Diaries. This is where the customization for Slayer and the task waiting system really come into play. There are more standard or meta block lists floating around that can give you the most XP per hour, but we'll get into that later on in this video. For now, I want to show you how to use the task waiting system to build your own ideal block list. One thing to keep in mind is that it's a good idea to wait until you get to Neve or Duradel before you start to build your own block list. If you do it earlier, you may end up completely changing your block list and just wasting those points. So it's a good idea to wait until the mid or end game uh, to really start honing down on your block list. The first step in building a solid block list is to decide what tasks you definitely want to do based on your Slayer Master's task list. Whether you wanna focus on tasks with a high profit, tasks with a high experience rate, or you really just want to do tasks that you find enjoyable and want to block ones you just don't like doing, just look through the list and keep a note of which ones you really want to keep. The second step is to look through the list a second time, this time taking note of the ones you really don't want to do or just ones you couldn't be bothered to do. The reason you should do this the second look through is that so you can have a sense of what monsters are on the list before you go through and start looking for possible bans. So now that we have two lists, one of monsters we really want to do and ones that we really would rather not, the third and final step is to sort this ban lit list, so the second list that we've got, by task weight, and ban the top one to six weighted monsters depending on how many blocks you have available. The reason you ban based on the highest weighted dislike task rather than just the ones you dislike the most is that you can save yourself from wasting points down the road. For example, you may just really hate doing Water Fiends and only moderately dislike doing Hellhounds. It's still better to ban Hellhounds rather than Water Fiends because you will get them on average five times more often than Water Fiends. So if you blocked Water Fiends, in the time it would normally take to get one Water Fiend task, you would have to cancel five Hellhound tasks, costing you a total of 250 points. 100 for the block of water fiends and 150 for the hellhound cancels whereas if you blocked hellhounds and just canceled water fiend tasks you would only be spending 130 points in the same scenario this example may be a bit extreme as those two tasks are on opposite ends of the task weight list but it's a good example of how you should block based on the task weight and not solely on the enjoyment so the main goal with building a block list is to find that balance between high weighted tasks you don't like and just general tasks you really don't like to do and then find which bands are the most optimal for your situation. So once you go through all these steps, you'll have a list of tasks that you're going to block once you get them. And then the rest of the tasks you just generally dislike can just be canceled. As long as the total weight percentage of the rest of your disliked task is under 33%, you will always at least break even with your points while still being able to cancel tasks you don't like. That's why it's not a good idea to block lower weighted tasks as you can just cancel them and get the points right back by doing tasks you do enjoy. So in the long run, it does save you Slayer points. 
So before we get into training methods for Slayer, I want to take a quick aside here and talk about Wilderness Slayer, as it does vary slightly from normal Slayer. The only Slayer Master for Wilderness Slayer is Crystillia, found in Edgeville, and she is a Slayer Master that assigns tasks based on the Wilderness. What makes this unique is that while other Slayer Masters may assign monsters that can be found in the Wilderness, Crystillia only assigns monsters that are in the Wilderness, and these tasks must be completed inside of the Wilderness for them to count. Her assignments will also not regard your combat level, so all the monsters in the wilderness are fair game regardless of your overall levels. Since there is so much extra risk with these tasks, there's more points associated with the tasks from the Slayer Master, starting at 25 for a normal task with streak rewards giving 125, 375, 625, 875, and 1250 depending on the task milestone and this greatly outweighs points from even Duradel. One caveat is that Wilderness Streaks are independent of your normal Slayer Tasks Streaks. So even if you've completed 100 normal Slayer Tasks in a row, your Wilderness Task Streak will start back at having to complete 5 tasks to start the streak, and then your streak will start at 1. This will not affect your standard streak at all, it is completely separate, but you can only have one Slayer task at a time. So even though the streaks for Standard Slayer and Wilderness Slayer are separate, you cannot have a Standard Slayer task and a Wilderness Slayer task. One more benefit of doing Wilderness Slayer is that you have an increased drop rate of Mysterious Emblems, as well as the ability to get the Slayer enchantment drop as a drop, and this enchantment improves the Slayer Dart spell. So that really does wrap it up for Wilderness Slayer and Slayer skill in general. So let's move on to different ways to train Slayer. While editing this, I realized that I should make a little quick little note here to kind of preface this section a little bit. I will not be going over how to complete specific tasks and giving you a guide on how to complete those tasks or how to gear for those tasks. This will purely be on how to train Slayer as a skill. I do have a video plan that will go over how to gear for Slayer and what's, what gear to buy and what to do to prepare for certain tasks, but that is not the scope of this video. This will be mainly, again, focusing on Slayer, so just keep that in mind. In this section of the video, I will be doing my best to give you guidelines on how to most optimize your Slayer experience as a whole. I will be focusing on some higher level content just due to time constraints of this video, but the concepts stated here apply to all levels, really. I also do want to stress that neither of the methods listed here are cut and dry. I'll mention this a few times throughout this section, but use this information that's given here as a guideline and form your own decisions based off of it. Slayer is an incredibly varied skill, and you shouldn't feel like you're boxing yourself into a corner with one specific block list or one specific task list. Use the information here as well as your own personal experience to create the most enjoyable experience for yourself. Really quick, before we get into the specifics about training Slayer, I just want to explain some items off the bat. The first item is the Black Mask or the Slayer Helm, and this increases your melee accuracy by about 16.67%, uh, your melee strength and accuracy, and if it is imbued, also increases your ranged and magic accuracy and strength, and when it's imbued, it will no longer have negative range and mage attack bonuses. The next item is the Expeditious Bracelet, and this gives a 25% chance for the kill to count as two kills towards the player's Slayer assignment without giving additional experience. So for example, if your task is Cal Fights, if you kill a Cal Fight while wearing this bracelet, you have a 25% chance for that one kill to count as two. The last item I want to go over is the Bracelet of Slaughter. This item gives a 25% chance for the Slayer assignment kill to not count towards your Slayer assignment, but granting the appropriate Slayer experience. So in the same example, if you kill one Caliphite, there's a 25% chance for it to not decrease the amount of kills left. So the Bracelet of Slaughter is used to extend your tasks, while the Expeditious Bracelet is used to speed tasks up. So now that we've gone over those items, I want to take the next time to talk about two main methods of training Slayer. The one method being XP-focused training, and the other one GP focus training. These may not be the best terms for them, but I think they do get the point across. 
So I want to start with XP focus training. If you are trying to focus on getting the fastest experience per hour, there's a few things to keep in mind. First off, let's talk about which Slayer Master to use, and then the block list, and the last thing we'll talk about is which tasks are very important. I apologize if this is a little behind the cutting edge meta, but I will try to do my best to be as accurate as possible. The information I'm basing this off of is just what I've seen from higher level players, as well as data provided by those players. One example is God Tormentor, a player who has recently got 200 mil Slayer experience and set many daily, weekly, and monthly records for Slayer. I will be basing the, re the next part of this video off of what I've seen data they've provided. So Slayer Masters, let's talk about that. You can really use either Duradel or Neve Steve. It, in the end, it doesn't really matter who you use. You can form block lists for either of these Slayer Masters to get very similar task lists. And since you'll be doing a set list of tasks, it doesn't make a huge difference uh, in the current meta. However, there is some personal preference that goes into them as you can adjust this list a little bit. But in general, I'll give data on both Slayer Masters. So let's talk about the block list. I will be listing this in order of importance and the block lists for both Duradel and for Steve. So the first and most important are Abyssal Demons as they have the highest task weight. The next will be Black Demons for Neve Steve and Hellhounds for Duradel. Next will be Fire Giants and Cave Kraken. After that, Hellhounds for Neve and then Black Demons for Duradel. Next will be Greater Demons for both and the last will be Spiritual Creatures and then Gargoyles for Duradel. And this is based off of task weighting and then which tasks you really want to make sure you're doing in order to get the most XP per hour. These task lists, while they can be adjusted a little bit, will do the most good in getting rid of inefficient tasks. I do apologize for mixing up the name Neve and Steve a little bit. From now on, I will just use Neve for that Slayer Master. So the goal with this block list, again, is to just go through the task wait list and block the tasks with the highest weight that give the most undesirable experience. You should also not unlock any of the extra tasks, such as Lizardmen or Bosses or Tazar, as they have high weights and give low experience comparatively. So now let's talk about the important tasks and what you want to make sure you're doing in order to get the most XP per hour. So for the task list, it's separated into two different lists. One list you use the Bracelet of Slaughter for, and the other one you use the Expeditious Bracelet. Let's start off by the Slaughter Bracelet tasks. And these tasks consist of Smoke Devils, Barraging Them, Barraging Neck Reels, Barraging Dust Devils, and then Dagonists and Calphites, using a cannon on those, of course. The tasks you use an Expeditious Bracelet for are Trolls, Suquas, Blood Vels, and Dark Beasts and especially Dark Beasts if you're using Duradel as it has a higher weighting for Dark Beasts compared to Neve. So you want to cannon all the possible tasks and really cancel anything else. The idea here is to use the Slaughter Bracelet with the really high XP per hour tasks and the Expeditious Bracelet with the ones on the lower side. Something to note is that you can switch tasks between the two groups, um, some tasks that are more expensive such as Dagoneths or Caliphites, and you can move those from the Slaughter Bracelet bucket to the Expeditious one to save some money without really losing too much experience. Again, Slayer comes down to how you want to play, so use what I've said here as a guideline to base your own personal decisions off of if you want to lean more towards the experience-heavy side of Slayer. But then it does wrap up our XP-focused Slayer methods, so let's move on to the GP focus on how, and how to get the most gold out of your Slayer. So this list will be a little less precise as there's much more room for variation. Actually, on that note, instead of going through specific block lists, I just wanna state what tasks are decent for profit and you can use that information however you seem fit. So I'm just gonna go down a list here. Karasks, Gargoyles, Brutal Black Dragons, Wyverns, Kraken, and bossing in general. And not just boss tasks, but also replacements such as doing Dagoneth Kings for Dagoneths, Caliphite Queen for the Caliphite tasks, or Cerberus for Hellhounds, Demonic Gorillas for your Black Demon tasks, as well as KBD for your Black Dragon tasks. So that's kind of what I mean by replacement. When you can do bosses instead of normal Slayer monsters, doing those will yield generally more profit. 
So while some of these tasks may be more GP per hour than others, and while the actual GP per hour may depend on the market, all of them generally yield profit while slaying. You can also see how almost all of these tasks um, that are highly profitable are not ones that are really good for the, getting the most experience per hour possible. However, that doesn't mean that they aren't worth doing. The main thing I want to stress with this part of the video is that Slayer is such an open-ended skill and you should never slay based on a set list of tasks. My suggestion is that you use the information here as nothing more than a guideline to shape your own block and task list. Personally, I mix the two, get a little bit of tasks from the GP per hour bucket, a few tasks from the XP focused bucket, and make a list that I find enjoyable so I'm never bored or I never feel like I'm grinding Slayer. It's always something new, it's always something varied, and it's always something I enjoy. So that does wrap up the training method part of this video. Again, we didn't go step by step or level by level as that's not my goal. My goal is to really give you ideas on how you can effectively and enjoyably train Slayer, especially at those higher levels where you'll spend the most amount of your time. But that is it for this part of the video, so we'll go on to the last section, which is really, should you get 99? So this part of the video, I'm going to be a little bit more relaxed and just give you my opinion, and I hope you'll be able to formulate your own opinion based off of this. But let's get into, I guess, some advantages and disadvantages of training Slayer. So really main advantages are profit you get quite a bit of profit if you decide to go that route and you also get varied experience no matter which route you choose you get not only your slayer experience but also combat in terms of melee mage and range depending on which tasks you do and overall you get quite a bit of experience and you get to do some varied content Slayer is one of the most varied skills in terms of where you get to train and what you get to do. And yeah, you may do the same 10 tasks over and over, but it's more varied than running on the same rooftop for 10 levels. So while it may not be the thing you enjoy the most, personally, I don't enjoy combat more than a few other skills, but I'm beginning to enjoy it more now that I'm understanding Slayer as a whole. And being able to pick and choose what I actually do in terms of tasks really helps me enjoy it just a little bit more. So I would say those two things are pretty big advantages. GP, if you do want to focus on that, or just the varied experience rates you get, as well as just the varied playing experience you get by being able to experience different parts of the game in different areas. Now I do want to talk about really just the main disadvantage of Slayer, and it really comes down to opportunity cost. And I don't think this is as big of a deal now as it used to be, but I mean, two or three years ago, Slayer XP rates were about 25 to 30K, whereas now you have people setting six hour or daily records at an average of 80 to 90,000 experience per hour. So if you got Slayer two to three years ago, it's way slower than it is now. And you do have to think about that opportunity cost. Where will Slayer be in the next few years? Chances are, I don't think there'll be that big of a jump as a lot of the big jumps lately, I don't think were completely intended and I don't think will be happening again. I don't think we'll see Slayer rates around 150K consistently per hour anytime soon, but that is something to keep in mind. If you are going for max and you're maybe 20% of the way to max, maybe save Slayer towards the end, as in general, it can be one of the slower skills to train. So in terms of maxing, it is better to keep those slower skills towards the end as a new method may come out. But that disadvantage, I say, is much less important now that we have rates closer to, you know, 70k per hour if you're playing casually. I don't play the game mid-max very much, but I can get 70k XP hour rates pretty consistently, and it's not something that's out of the normal. So I would say right now is a really good time for Slayer, but there is that thing to keep in mind that a lot of the slower skills may have a different meta in a year or two, and the XP rates may be much different. But that is all I really have to say on the should you get 99. In general, if I had to give it a one word answer, I'd say yes. I used to very much dislike PVM, but the more I'm understanding and getting into actual Slayer, doing it efficiently, doing it well, it's very enjoyable and gives you a very varied experience of the game. Especially with the current meta, there's some magic tasks, there's some range tasks, there's some melee tasks. So you get a feel for all the different areas of combat while training Slayer. So I would say Slayer is in a very good spot to train right now. And yeah, if you want to go for that skill, I don't think you're missing out on too much. 
But that is all I have for this video. I hope you guys did enjoy it and learned something from it. If you have any suggestions for different skills to do in this style, let me know. I do have a few planned uh, based on suggestions and stuff I want to do, and I'll be coming out with those in the next few months. But that is all I have for this video. Again, I do hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you next time.